The movie starts in the planet Krypton, where a girl named Kara Zor-El and her mother, General Alora Zor-El, are racing back home. When tired, they order a bench from the computerized park where they sit. Kara wishes her mom would spend more time with her away from the Science Council, and Alora promises to spare time. Alora also hands Kara a badge indicating she will now join the military guild. However, their beautiful conversation is interrupted when meteorites crash in from the sky and they run to their quarters. Alora had built a hyperspeed escape pod which she activates while their world is crumbling, but Kara has to go alone. Alora asks her daughter to find her cousin, and the pod jets off into space, from where Kara watches as Krypton falls into destruction. A piece of the meteorites hits her pod, and she becomes unconscious. Kara's pod then travels to the planet Earth. Later, the scene changes to Kara now trying to adapt to life on Earth. She receives a letter from her cousin, Carl L., who asks her to wear a disguise. She orders the computer to activate a map, but this doesn't work around here as she struggles to move around the city of Metropolis. Just then, a villain called Solomon Grundy appears destroying cars as he calls out Superman to play. However, this time, he meets with Supergirl, who tries to stop him. Grundy is about to defeat Kara, but Superman flies in just in time to save her. He also came with Batman, who distracts Grundy and Superman finishes him off. Batman is somewhat concerned for the city, since Kara has caused more destruction than good ever since she came. Kara overhears their talk and flies away in despair, followed by Superman. While Batman is checking out Grundy's gun, the Flash arrives. Batman suspects the gun Grundy was using could have been designed by another criminal. Later, Superman finds his cousin, Kara, sighted on a rooftop reminiscing about her mother. Clark understands Kara's situation like trying to adjust to a new planet, new powers, and finding out her little cousin isn't little anymore. He tells Kara to try to make Earth her new home, but she finds Earth too weird and primitive. She also misses Krypton and wishes that Batman would go ahead and kick her out. Seeing her sad, Superman comes up with another approach. He opens a portal and they travel into another dimension, which is Earth in the 31st century and the headquarters of the Legion of Superheroes. Back in Earth, some three masked men force their way into the Star Lab's facility, but Batman defeats them. They say the circle remains unbroken before mysteriously passing away from a drug in their mouth. Meanwhile, Superman introduces Kara to some of the founders of the Legion of Superheroes, including Saturn Girl. Think of them as the Justice League from the future, since they got their inspiration from their team. Carl wishes to enroll Kara into the team's training program, but she is skeptical. However, after meeting Mon-El, a trainee from Planet Daxem, Kara chooses to stay. Superman then leaves them, and Mon takes Kara on tour in the Legion Academy. Kara also sees the vault, which is where the Legion keeps all the weapons taken from their enemies. It is extremely protected and has never been broken into throughout history, and is out of bounds for the Academy members. Kara is also introduced to her new roommate, Dawnstar. She also meets Brainiac, a villain from one of her encounters when he tried to kill Superman, and she tries to subdue him. Brainiac protects himself with a shield, while he reveals he isn't a villain, but a 12th level intellect. Kara doesn't believe this and they start to fight. Brainiac attacks Kara with bots, but she lasers them with her eyes. Their fight is then stopped by a legion called Timberwolf and they are summoned before the legion jury. There, Kara learns that the guy isn't even Brainiac himself, but Brainiac 5, who was cloned from parts of the evil Brainiac 1 after he got destroyed. He is also super intelligent, genius, and all that. They are dismissed, but Timberwolf is concerned over why they let Brainiac into the Academy, believing he could be evil. They are also concerned that the other legions are disappearing in silence. They inform Shadow to keep an eye on the computers as they prepare for the worst. Brainiac overhears their conversation and exclaims that his plan has to happen that night. Kara meets the rest of her Academy classmates like Bouncing Boy, Invisible Kid, Triplicate Girl, Phantom Girl, who is too shy for the camera, Prody, the class pet, and also Arms Fall Off Boy, 
However, the worry is that there is only one Legion spot and everyone thinks Mon-El will get it. Later, the students are taught how to solve problems, stop crime, and administer justice. Brainiac and Supergirl are engaged in a competition with each trying hard to be better than the other in various tests. Supergirl claims she is right because Krypton invented robots, but Brainiac claims his species perfected the robots. However, their nonsense stops when Kara's robot malfunctions and attacks them, and they have to stop it together. They're almost friends, but when they question who started the chaos, they argue again, and both are suspended from the tests. Kara later learns that other Legionnaires don't want Brainiac around, and she pities him. She then notices some masked people on the rooftops who soon disappear. Later, as Triplicate Girl is searching for the lost pet Prody, she sees Mon enter a mysterious hole, but she gets attacked by two masked men while Prody watches. Later, Prody shows Kara and Brainiac the body of Triplicate Girl, but the Legions subdue Brainiac, claiming he planted a virus into their system so he could steal the weapons from their vault. Brainiac defends himself, saying that killing Triplicate Girl was not his doing, but of the Dark Circle. They ignore his argument and transfer him to the holding cells. Supergirl believes Brainiac is innocent, since he can't commit such a crime and then return to be captured, since he isn't that stupid, right? She is dismissed by Timberwolf, but later Kara sneaks into the training room to access the data about the Dark Circle. She learns that the Dark Circle is a terrorist group which wreaks havoc and provides weapons to other terrorist groups, but their leaders and origins are unknown. The relentless Supergirl then visits Brainiac for more answers. He explains that the Miracle Machine was created for users to bend reality to their will, but after its disappearance, it is used as a weapon of mass destruction. The Legion then got it and placed it into the vault. Brainiac's family also planned to steal the machine for the Inner Circle and he had to stop that by enrolling in the Academy to steal it first. Supergirl believes him and she frees Brainiac to continue his mission. Monel then finds them talking and says he also overheard the news from the Legions and has come to help. Brainiac then throws in an orb which unlocks the vault and they march in. There, Brainiac then solves a security code to avoid being attacked by the drones. They see the miracle machine and Kara is excited that they did it. However, Monel stabs Kara with a piece of kryptonite and reveals to Brainiac 5 that he is a member of the Dark Circle. The Dark Circle soldiers also attack the Legions and imprison them. Meanwhile, Brainiac tends to the wounded Kara and they eventually meet the leader of the Dark Circle, Brainiac 1. Brainiac 1 was able to recover his destroyed form by placing parts of his clones to form his body. He also planned to steal the powerful Miracle Machine, so he had to let Brainiac 5 with level 12 intellect break the first code before he took the machine. Brainiac 5 then disappears with Kara in the circle searching for them, while Brainiac 1 activates the machine. Brainiac 5 then places a device on Kara's wound which sucks in the kryptonite and she recovers. He compliments her strength, courage, and beauty, and they are about to kiss but are suddenly pulled through the walls by Phantom Girl. Triplicate Girl is also surprisingly alive. This is because she peeled off her other extra selves before her third one got killed, so now there are two, hence duplicate girl. They also plan to take action, but first they rescue their academy friends. Following this, Brainiac 5 and Kara lead Monel to the other academy friends who have a bone to pick with him while they find Brainiac 1. Brainiac 1 activates the machine, which sends powerful energy field out that subdues everyone around, even Monel. However, the clones on his body begin to argue about who should wield the machine's power. The clones then attempt to reach the machine, but they end up breaking Brainiac 1's body into two, and he dies. Meanwhile, the Miracle Machine grows stronger, and they have to stop it. Kara has a look at it, and she sees her mother in another reality. She thinks she can bring her and Krypton back, but Brainiac 5 says that won't prevent reality from being destroyed. However, they control the machine to go into a different reality, and everything reverts back to normal. Monel tries to escape from the Academy, but Supergirl defeats and captures him. They are soon joined by the whole legion of superheroes, who vote to have all the Academy heroes promoted into the legion of superheroes. Brainiac 5 is sorry for not bringing back Kara's Krypton and her mother. He offers to research how to bring back the Miracle Machine, but Kara is cool 
and kisses him instead. Earth is not so bad for her after all. They plan to continue the research, but first they embrace each other again, bringing the thrilling film to an end. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. I'll be back with another interesting movie recap. Until then, take care.